Hello everyone, this is Joseph Knight here and this is my entry to the OIMUO event, my personal entry where I would like to show you what I have been doing for the last couple of years professionally at the university, at the Johannes Kepler University here in Linz in Austria. And I would like to show you the application of OpenFoam for the setup of the injection molding process. Now you might ask yourself, what the hell is that? I'm not sure if you know injection molding, uh, the process injection molding. It is being used to create what you guys consider to be plastic parts. Now you might watch this video on a monitor or your laptop or your mobile phone. And if you take a look at it, the cover might be out of plastic or your mouse cover is out of plastic or your smart TV or the bumper of your car. And these plastic parts are created with polymer injection molding. It is highly being used in different kinds of industries like communication, medicine, automotive packaging, and so on. And the main challenge is the material uh, itself, the high viscosity of the material and the non-Newtonian behavior, because in during the production to maintain a certain volume flux, you need very high pressures and also very high forces in the machines. So the machines have to be very big and also very expensive. And experimental trial and error can be very expensive, so a good alternative is the simulation. And I gave a couple of talks on that already in the last couple of years. I started with the implementation in 2014 and we pro um, advanced quite a bit during the last couple of years and I would like to show you some late results here. So the process is a discontinuous process where you have different steps. First, you have to enter your polymers in form of small pellets, which look like small tic tacs and into a screw, into a cylinder and um, in, into a screw and this screw is rotating and moving backwards and with this uh, movement the pellets are being transfer uh, transported in the direction of a mold which you can see on the left hand side here which has the shape of your final product and in front of the screw uh, already liquid molten polymer is collected and this is the point where we start our simulation. This is the starting time where we assume to have liquid polymer in front of a screw. And then in our first stage, in the filling stage, this screw makes an axial movement without rotation in the direction of the mold, thus injecting the polymer into the mold. And then once the mold is more or less filled, then uh, it is common practice to switch from the constant velocity condition of the screw during the filling stage to a constant pressure or constant force during the packing phase to uh, fill the last pockets of the, s uh, of the mold and also to pack additional material into the mold. And then once the at least the gate is frozen, then nothing can be packed, then you switch off the pressure and then you wait and cool down your part and you eject it. So the I would like to show you here the equations that are implemented. The process is highly compressible, so you have to use the compressible form of the continuity and the Navier-Stokes equations. And you also have to uh, you uh, model a certain energy and equation, which is and uh, the where shear heating is very important for polymeric materials. You cannot assume a constant temperature on the walls of the tool of the mold itself. You have to calculate a certain heat flux uh, from the melt into the walls. Uh, so you have to calculate a temperature gradient, which has a spatial distribution and also a temporal evolution. It is of course a multi-phase flow where you use the volume of fluid method for that um, the compressible version and you have to model the non-Newtonian material of the material, uh, the non-Newtonian behavior of the material with the so-called cross WLF model which is common practice in polymer processing. And with this model you describe the shear rate dependence, the temperature and the pressure dependence of the viscosity of the material. And as I mentioned the liquid, the polymer melt is 
compressible and for that you use the so-called Tate model to model this behavior. Additionally, I mentioned that there are different phases and we do not do not want to stop the simulation to switch between phases. We want to run one simulation, so we implemented a, a system where the s a solver um, uh, knows when to switch from different between different conditions and for that the velocity and the pressure inlet conditions are being changed in the filling phase we have a time dependent profile for the velocity and the pressure is zero gradient at the inlet when certain conditions are met then the boundary condition for vo the velocity notices that and it switches from this time dependent profile to be zero gradient and the pressure switches from zero gradient to have a time dependent pressure pro profile and then this pressure gradient drives the flow and in the cooling phase the velocity remains to be zero gradient and the pressure because the pressure is switched off is switched to one bar this is a very small but not so simple geometry which we use for teaching purposes it is a small but as you see do you have geometric challenges and also meshing challenges because you have small holes longer holes and also fins and this geometry is being filled from this side as is from the upper side then it is being filled through this sprue and then in the bottom you have a very small gate uh, and you can see it here on this side and through this gate the geometry is being filled with liquid polymer and for this geometry we have only one pressure sensor and um, you can see the blue part is the actual part that is being ejected at the beginning there you only have air and the liquid the red region is where which is filled uh, the, the nozzle is filled with liquid and then this liquid is injected into the mold and this is what you eject in the end and the pressure sensor is here in front of this screw chamber so you can imagine that this inlet surface is where the screw is pushing in the liquid polymer into the mold and the pressure sensor is here so we know the pressure signal of pro the pressure loss over the entire geometry the nozzle then the sprue the tunnel gate and the entire mold itself and this is a typical uh, result of such a simulation we uh, the purple line is the experimental line at the beginning you have the um, increase in the sprue and the tunnel gate which is uh, has a higher slope and then you have a smaller slope in of increase in pressure um, where the entire geometry is being filled and then at a certain point you switch over to the packing phase this is now the uh, filling phase and here what you usually co uh, compare is the pressure around switch over and then the experimental values as well as a couple of simulation results here where we used a fine mesh for the uh, green line and we used a uh, coarser mesh for the dynamic simulation where we used a coarse mesh and we switched over to a finer mesh for the packing phase and you as you see the quality of the results are regarding the pressure rather good the deviation at switch over is two to four percent and the ta point of time when we switch over from the filling phase to the packing phase is also captured really nicely the packing phase here the most important point is where to, uh, does the part freeze and in this case the as i mentioned here this uh, very thin tunnel gate is uh, frozen at a certain point and the question is when is this point because at after this point you can switch over the patch pressure which saves energy because you don't have to uphold the high um, forces and experimentally what you do you just do trial and error you switch off the pressure after one second three seconds five seconds seven nine and eleven seconds and once um, the gate is frozen you cannot pack anything into the mold so 
before the freezing time is reached the part mass still increases but after a certain point of time the mass will not increase and then you know that around this time you have your time where your where you can switch off your uh, packing f uh, pressure and in the experiments it's around seven and in the simulation is also nicely met around to be out, uh, around seven so if you want to use this for process setup we, we did that we purchased the new mold and with 14 pressure sensors and the uh, we wanted to test it so i ran the simulations before we uh, tested the mold with the 14 pressure sensors and this is a very simple mold with a plate and a longer sprue and it is injected into the mold is injected into this very simple plate with the 14 pressure sensors installed why 14 because of course this should be symmetric this geometry and the filling should be symmetric but often this is not the case and we wanted to make sure that the filling is really symmetric and of course and we have uh, so what i will show you are three pressure sensors here on the side so once we reach the third pressure sensor we are more or less filled and we have also a pressure sensor in the screw chamber very similar to the previous geometry here okay so now what we want to take a look at is again the filling time uh, for safety reasons when we have to switch over from velocity to pressure we want to also know the maximum the pressure values uh, during switch over which is a safety uh, feature so we don't uh, destroy our machine and also we want to know the packing time for energy consumption and this is the simulation this i ran uh, the, na the day before the mold was set up and the simulation calculated the maximum pressure of 246 bar and the filling time of 0 0.92 seconds and the cavity pressure at the three uh, locations between 60 and 80 bar okay and then the next day the mm, the mold arrived and then we ran a couple of uh, experiments with uh, certain settings that I also inserted into the simulation and there in the experiments we found a maximum pressure of 226 bar instead of the simulation of 246 which is also a rather good agreement and less than 10 percent deviation and in the cavity we found the pressure to be between 50 and 75 which is also a very good agreement and also the switch over time is nicely met now regarding freezing this is also very important in the experiments we found the freezing time to be between seven or eight seconds and in the simulation we find this to be approximately at 7.35 seconds <clears throat> so with this we find uh, we can run simulations of injection molding in open foam we find a rather good agreement with a deviation of five to ten percent between experiments and simulation and now as you see we can run the simulation before the actual mold setup and find good safe um, um, uh, process parameters where we do not reach the maximum pressures of a mold or a machine and we can also state when we can switch off the high pressures and the high um, forces in the machine so we can con uh, consume less energy and for this simulation the for this uh, very simple plate the simulation ran in two and a half minutes but uh, uh, and the, the experimental setup w was done within half an hour or one an hour so here in with this very simple geometry the simulation was even faster than the experimental setup but i do not claim that this is always the uh, true for complex geometries then the simulation will take longer than the experimental trial and error but on the other hand if you have very uh, big geometries for example a car bumper then you don't, don't want to uh, make uh, 50 or 100 experiments to just set up the process you can run a simulation and have a very good uh, first idea where your process window is going to be and then you can go to the machine set up the process window and then do a smaller parameter study to find really the best 
setting for your process and in the next steps and this is what we are doing currently we are investigating further geometries more complex geometries and also other kinds of material more complex materials that what i showed you here with that i hope that you liked these results and you understood what we were doing <coughs> I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.